The path to success in life can be so weird at times. For some, success seems to come on a silver platter and they only need to reach out and take it. But for others, the road to stardom can be long and arduous, but nevertheless fulfilling. In cricket, it is no different. In this video, we look at the story of Surya Kumar Yadav and his journey from humble beginnings to superstardom. This is the story of Sky. Sky's love of the game began on the streets of Varanasi, India. At 10 years old, he moved to Mumbai with his family as his father had got a job at a nearby nuclear power facility. Seeing the interest and talent that his son had in the game, Surya Kumar's father enrolled him in a nearby cricket camp shortly after. Then at the age of 12, he went to Alf Saka Cricket Academy under the tutelage of former Test Captain, former Indian Chairman of Selectors and 116 Test Match veteran Dilip Saka. On February 10, 2010, Surya Kumar was picked to play state cricket for Mumbai in the one-day format, where he made 41 off 37 balls in a winning effort against Gujarat. Playing alongside him were notable players like Wasim Jaffa and Ajit Agarka. Within the same year, he made his T20 debut in the Syed Mushtaq Ali Trophy and finally a call-up to Mumbai's Ranji Trophy team, even earning the prestigious MA Chindambaram Trophy for the best cricketer in India under 22 years of age. It is here in the Ranji Trophy during the 2011-2012 season where Surya Kumar began to make a name for himself, scoring 754 runs in 9 matches at an average of 68.54 runs. On the qualities of Surya Kumar Yadav today, Wasim Jaffa explained in a September 22 interview that what makes him such a good batter is his determination to play his style of cricket, coupled with his calm demeanour that gives an impression that he is a seasoned international veteran. Soon, the call from the IPL came to him and he was given a contract to play for the Mumbai Indians during the 2012 season. This whirlwind upward trajectory was capped off with a chance at the big time. If things kept going his way, a spot in the national side is almost within grasp. Suri Kumar didn't play much in that 2012 season. In fact, of the 17 matches that Mumbai played that year, he played only once, in the second match of Mumbai's season against Pune, where he was bowled for a duck off four balls. In a side packed with great batters like Sachin Tendulkar, Rohit Sharma, Kyron Pollard, Ambati Rayadu and Dinesh Karthik, the team management decided to go another way, eventually losing in an elimination final to Chennai Super Kings. Surya Kumar wasn't given another contract for the next season. It is in a situation like this, in a person's life, where things can start to go wrong. Where, after being given a shot at the big time and seemingly not taking it, that a person may start to doubt themselves. That doubt then creeps into a person's mind and takes hold, and a mental glass ceiling is created, and that person never reaches their full potential ever. But not Sky. He kept working and was given the captaincy for an India under 23 side that won an Asia Cricket Emerging Teams Cup in 2013. Even though his form that season didn't hit the heights of 2011-2012, soon his shot at the big time would come around again. But this time, not in Mumbai, but on the other side of the country in the state of West Bengal. For the 2014 season, he would wear the purple and gold of Shah Rukh Khan's Kolkata Knight Riders. Don't get it twisted, when Surya Kumar came into KKR, he was by no means bought as a headline star. He was picked up on a 70 lakh contract. By comparison, in the same auction, uncapped but well-known IPL regular Manish Pandey was bought for 170 lakh, and KKR's biggest buy for an Indian player was Robin Utapa, who went for 500 lakh. It shows that Yadav still had a way to go to build a solid reputation as a reliable IPL player. In the 2014 season, he batted at number 7, often regarded as a place where you see big hitters and all-rounders come in to end in innings with a flurry of late runs. We didn't see any standout man of the match performances, but Yadav performed his role in a consistent manner. Honestly, that's all KKR needed in that season, as they had an absolutely stacked side. They won that tournament and Yadav ended with the second highest batting average in the side, behind IPL MVP Robin Utapa. Perhaps most importantly for Yadav, he was part of a title winning team and he had a spot in an IPL side for the next season. That 2015 season would be a disappointment for KKR, who didn't make the semis, but is most remembered in Yadav's career 
as the tournament where he scored 46 off 20 balls in a winning performance against eventual winners and the team that previously cut him, the Mumbai Indians. From 2015 up to 2017, Sky was a stalwart of that team. Sky's time at KKR came to an end in 2017. His final game was a losing semi-final to Mumbai Indians, where he top scored with 31 off 25 balls. Sky had a funny habit of playing well against Mumbai over the years. I wonder why that was. Maybe revenge, maybe something else. But overall, over the years, since being picked up on a fairly low IPL contract in 2014, Surya Kumar had solidified himself as a hard-hitting yet calm batter whose ability to target any part of the ground, like a certain other person, made him a very hot commodity in the league. I hear people are calling him the 360 player. It's just my name, guys. Don't, don't steal my name. <laughs> His services were again put up for the highest bidder in the 2018 IPL auction. And as luck or some divine force would have it, guess who bought him? Mumbai. And not just on any small contract either. Sky created a three-way bidding war between Kolkata, Delhi and Mumbai, which finished with a winning bid of 3.2 crore. That was the second highest price for an uncapped batter in that auction behind Rahul Tripathi. Let's take a quick step back for a second to fully understand this situation. Surya Kumar Yadav started his IPL journey in 2012 by playing one game, getting out for a duck and then being cut in the same season. He toiled in other competitions to keep his fortunes alive, gets picked up by KKR in 2014 on a pretty low contract and works his way up into that side. Now, the team that cut him just spent 3.2 crore on him to have his services back. Crazy. Not only that, Mumbai put him directly in at number 4 in their first game in the 2018 season. Number 4 is one of the most important spots in a cricket side, responsible for a big portion of a team's runs. Surya Kumar scored the most runs in the entire team for that season, and it wasn't even close. He scored 512 runs at an average of 36.57, while the next best, Evan Lewis, scored 382 at an average of 29.38. He had well and truly taken the second opportunity in the IPL with both hands. Any indications of a mental glass ceiling had been well and truly destroyed. For the next four years, the Mumbai Indians went on to win two of the next four IPLs, with Sky playing an integral role in their success, regularly being close to the highest run scorer for the side. He scored in excess of 1,600 runs on his own in those four seasons together. This sustained success at the highest levels of the IPL got the attention of the national team selectors. And at the age of 30, after toiling for more than 10 years and playing over 100 IPL games, on March 14, 2021, Surya Kumar was handed his first cap to play for the Indian national team in a T20 series against England in Ahmedabad. The first ball he faced a few days later was a bouncer from Jofra Archer, which he hooked over fine leg for six. How good is that? He has been a regular in the side ever since, forming a key part of the 2022 World Cup side that went all the way to the semi-final in Australia. His destructive and innovative ability to score anywhere around the ground makes him a nightmare to face in the middle. At the time of writing, he is currently ranked as the best T20 batter in the world and has the highest career strike rate in T20 international history at 179.63. For the layperson, that means he scores at an average of 1.79 runs for every ball he faces. That's some serious batting ability. Even now at 32 years of age, and although he has a few less caps than the players he plays with in the national side, he does not look out of place, nor is he likely to be slowing down anytime soon. Now I could end this story by showering you with stats that show how good and how complete Surya Kumar Yadav is as a player, but I think what shines through the most in this journey we've taken through his career is the fact that in the face of adversity and hitting career roadblocks of his own, Surya Kumar has kept his head down and worked hard to reach the pinnacle of the game. His cutting from the Mumbai Indians team at an early age perhaps set him on his right path, and through determination, a calm demeanor, and a penchant for never giving up, he has earned his place in every team he has been a part of since. If these actions, over the words of others like mine, don't show his true qualities, I don't know what does. What a player. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like below and consider subscribing. More content like this will be on the way. If you have a favorite moment in Sky's career so far, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.